In this video, we'll take a look at how to create a total column in Excel to quickly and easily sum up the sales across the four quarters for each location. So we'll begin by going to cell F1 and typing total. And notice here how it borrowed the bold and font formats from the previous cell, so that can be quite useful. It doesn't always happen depending on what you're doing, but often Excel tries to anticipate how you want to format the next cell so it often saves us some time on the outset. Now next click in cell F2 and then what I want to do here is create a total that sums across the four quarters once again. And the way we'll do that here the first time is let's go ahead with this cell selected, go to the auto sum button up here, click on this list arrow and select sum. Now something just happened here that may look new to you if you're new to Excel. What's going on here is that Excel is displaying a formula that it's going to use, and in fact, technically it's a function. I'll tell you more about that in a moment. But it's using a formula here where it's going to sum a certain number of values or add together a certain number of values. And notice these lines here that are moving around these four cells. Believe it or not, those are actually called marching ants. That's the technical term for it. As you can imagine, these are ants marching around the cells, right? But that is the name for it. And what it's telling us is Excel saying, hey, I'm going to calculate the sum, or I'm going to add it together, all of the values in these four cells. And that's actually exactly what we want. And we'll spend a lot more time with formulas and functions like this later in our Excel series. But for now, just a couple basic things to know to get started with, to get used to. Notice the equal sign first. Whenever you see an equal sign in Excel, with very rare exception, that tells us that we're going to perform a formula or a function. Okay, so Excel knows it's about time to perform some calculations. On the other hand, if I didn't have the equal sign here, then I would just say sum B2E2 and nothing would be done. So the equal sign is critical. So that's the first thing we need to make sure we do. And then sum, once again, is that sum function that tells Excel to add together a number of cells. And then notice how we have an open parentheses, and then cell B2. Let's see where that is. That's B2. So that's our first cell here, right? And then we have a colon. I'll tell you about that in a minute. And then E2. Let's find E2. E2 is right here. So what this is saying is start at B2. The colon means continue through continuously, so go from cell to cell until you get to E2. So this is telling Excel, add B2 and then keep going, so that's C2, D2, until you get to E2, add that one as well, then stop. And then this closed parentheses tells Excel, okay, we're done. So that's really it for the sum function. With that now explained, let's go ahead and press the Enter key. And then notice how Excel has summed those four values. Now this time, some of the formats have been copied, but not all of them. So I want to show you a way to copy the formats quickly and easily so that you don't have to reformat everything. Let's go ahead and click on cell E2 for a moment. Go to this Format Painter button. Now it's very important that you double click on it. So double click. And then notice how I have a little paintbrush when I move this around. Click on that which you want formatted. Notice here how we got these pound or hashtag symbols. Now that's not anything to be concerned about, even though it looks a little concerning at first. All that means is that there's not enough room to display the information. So let's go ahead and expand this to 14. Okay, there we go. Now you can see the information. And then whenever you see these marching ants, the best thing to do when you're done and you don't need to do it anymore is press the escape key. Okay, and that took care of that. It's gone now. So now what I want to do is go ahead and do the sum function one more time. Let's go through this option one more time, and later we'll do these ourselves. We'll type them from memory as we move on. So let's go ahead and use this auto sum feature one more time. So click sum, and that looks good, right? The marching ants are around the four cells we want. So go ahead and press enter. Okay, and there we go. Now all we need to do is copy the format. So I'll go to this one this time, double click Format Painter, click on that cell, then press Escape, and there we go. Okay, that looks very good. So we have totals now, and we have our four quarters.
Now one last thing before we close for this video. Another nice feature of using formulas where you have these cell references or the cells referred to is that if I go ahead and change a value, like let's say I change, my boss comes to me and says, oh, the sales were updated. This needs to be $5 more. So it's 23,250. So I'm going to double click on that cell to edit it. Type 50 there. But before I press enter, watch over here. Notice how it's 10360. And I'm going to press enter. Remember, I increased this by $5. Press enter. And now this is automatically updated to be 10365, where it was 10360 before. So that's really helpful. By using these formulas with cell references inside, any change to a cell that is included in a formula is automatically changed on that calculation. Okay, so that's a really nice feature of using formulas and functions in Excel. But I want to actually bring that back to the 45. So let's undo that, and we can go up here, click Undo once. That brings us back to 45, and this back to 60. So that looks good. Okay, that's it for this video. In our next video, we'll go ahead and calculate a chart based on these values.